started to research the circular economy, we looked into industry, infrastructure, education and politics, and many things pointed to Holland, so we've come here to investigate. It doesn't make sense that we live in a linear economy like we now do. Mm -hmm. All the things that we make are thrown away or incinerated. So we have decided that it is a good idea to boost a circular economy. And that is why we adopted the Cradle to Cradle concept. Cradle to Cradle is about making uh, products of such pure materials that you can endlessly recycle it. It is so logical, because why would you not make products of totally safe and pure material if it is doable. In that way we are copying and the best way uh, things work in nature. What we see now is that industries are picking up cradle to cradle, circular economy, biomimicry, concepts like that and are moving ahead. The Dutch have an, a tradition of working with nature mm -hmm. and the cradle to cradle principles are very familiar to uh, uh, the way Dutch people think about nature. Uh, nevertheless, it's difficult to be uh, aligned and then do the right thing, but the, the feeling is very strong. Six hundred thousand tons of floor covering goes to landfill each year in the UK, which is a huge amount of waste. But some companies are turning that on its head, and Desso here in Holland is certainly one of them. I think what's fascinating for me talking to you is that you see Cradle to Cradle as a business opportunity. If you look to our market share, it went up in the Carpetal market from 15% in 2007 to 21%. Our profitability, our EBIT, went up from uh, less than 1% in 2006 and now we are at 9% EBIT year to date. This gives credibility to the Cradle to Cradle concept. That enables me to convince other entrepreneurs to take the same route. Industry now is working uh, according to the principles of the Industrial Revolution, focused on uh, efficiency. Gradually they are changing uh, towards uh, a, a new way of producing, uh, more according to ecological principles. And what we see is an enormous impulse towards innovation, creativity, new products, but also as a business opportunity. They are, uh, have better results. Rudy, you've been working in this space for several years. Yeah. Do you see a change in how companies and even uh, thoughts are working together? I mean, you guys know each other because you're working on a similar project. Yeah. How did that happen? Basically, have the same philosophy. And uh, because of the need of cooperation, because of the, 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 the similar problems you have or challenges you have, everybody uh, is looking for a way to, uh, to um, connect with each other. It is a, a, a rather small group that really pushes things, uh, things forward. In these kind of developments you have also to work together with other people. Uh, you need a, a lot of knowledge uh, to get it done and also in, uh, in, in circular economy type of solutions you never can do it alone. You, you, need, uh, you need a collaboration in the chain to make it happen. Working together in business is all well and good, but it's not enough on its own. We focus on discussing with the government mm. how we can together become more sustainable in yeah. Holland because that's still a big challenge. Whatever you do as a government is you need to enhance the quality of the work in, in companies instead of controlling what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And when you then look to the, the way of the government can work on it, you need to think about the conditions uh, that, that you can influence where companies can perform better. As a company it's, it's, it's much more interesting because you become an organization with a positive agenda. Like you said before, up to now everyone is trying to minimize the things they don't do right. But that's not the right way, you have to do things right from the beginning. Where we work is as important as how we work, and here Holland has some good ideas too. Rethinking the future gives us the chance to redesign every aspect of the system, including the buildings in which we live and work. 
What we so often see is an old building knocked down, a new one put in its place in a very linear way. But what these guys have done is a bit different. They've kept the heritage whilst giving the building a whole lot of character too. Buildings are the same as any other product. Design them correctly from the outset and there's no wrong to put right. These are thermal solar panels and we use them to take the heat from the sun mm -hmm. and with that we actually warm water. And we do not only take the heat from those solar panels but also from the processes in our building and from the greenhouses. I understand the energy of the building to run it, but what about the materials that actually built the building? Well, the choice of materials is very important and we want actually the building to, to be able to take it apart, to dismantle it again later on and reuse the materials again. So we build it of materials like glass and steel and wood, untreated wood and concrete uh, that, that are all materials that uh, yeah, we can take apart again. As an ecologist, I've been preaching the way nature works, let's say, and in nature, like, there is no waste. We see a circular economy, and I think if we do our economy the same way as these ecological principles, on the basis of these ecological principles, you in fact see that there is no antagonism anymore between ecology and economy, and they are harmonized. What I really love about this is that I can in make students enthusiastic. Yeah? I, I tell them um, I'm old, you know, my generation <laughs> has created the problem and uh, you can, you know, you can actually uh, solve those problems or you can create a new world, a different world. So it's a different way, a different mindset, different way of thinking. <laughs> It seems pretty clear to me that Holland is leading the way when it comes to redesign thinking. So it's no surprise, perhaps, that people come from all over the world to study here. Marika, we're here in Amsterdam and you live here working as both a politician and in education. How is that evolving? Well, it's slowly evolving. We have uh, two challenges to face there. Because one, uh, nature and environmental education uh, is sometimes part of the uh, curriculum, but not on, on a solid base. And the other thing is, when it is, it is still about doing things less bad instead of doing things good. So we have to try to get this uh, into the system on a solid base, and we have to try to get the content of the nature and environmental issued more towards life principles, towards doing things good. Industries ask for different types of education. They want people with new skills aboard. Redesigning the way we live, work and exist means looking at every level of society. The products we use and how they're made, the buildings we live in and how they're built, and how we educate the next generation. Creating the circular economy is obviously a huge challenge, but what's been interesting here in Holland is that they have an advantage through working together. Nationally they're pooling their ideas and resources and they're making this happen on a national scale.